we have a little time left. You don't have to hurry so much, Malcolm. <laughs> you were born in Omaha, is that right? Yes, sir. And you left your family left Omaha when you were what, one year old? I imagine about a year old. And why did they leave Omaha? Well, to my understanding, uh, the Ku Klux Klan uh, burned down one of their homes in uh, in uh, in Omaha. Uh, are we going down to Lincoln? See if we can get people to recognize what they should recognize. <laughs> this is a Nebraska son. He's from here. Like, he's world renowned. He's not really as recognized you know, like, here as opposed to so everywhere said, else in the country, of course, around the world. I hope that um, they put him in the Hall of Fame or whatever they try to do here in Nebraska. He's needed. You know, I hope they build a school here. Every other city has a school, Malcolm X School. They got a Mandela School here. <laughs> So they need to show more love about Malcolm. And Malcolm talked about human rights. He didn't talk about no civil, civil rights. He said it was domestic. Right. The fact of it is, his whole thing, that's why he took, he was the one who took the United States to the, to the UN on human rights. Malcolm was the kind of person who I think would be described by most people as charming, approachable, very articulate, to use the word they used in those days. As you can see on the agenda, there's eight nominees. And what this um, hearing is doing now, did you get one? Okay. Is actually narrowing down those eight nominees to three. So our job here is just to apply the pressure, right? Of course we know that they have already most likely made their decision, but we wanna be here to, um, like I said, hold them accountable to Malcolm's legacy and the respect that needs to be put on his name. The couple's fierce determination against overwhelming odds would be sharply reflected in their fourth born child, Malcolm. The reason why Malcolm did not stay here was simply because he was ran out under threat of his life and his family's life. And that is not anything that should be held against Malcolm when we're talking about him being in the Hall of Fame. He showed us uh, a certain dignity uh, against some obstacles. And uh, he took it, he showed us how to be men. He was able to formulate everything that you kind of felt that you weren't able to explain, and he was able to say that. signed a proclamation for Malcolm X uh, week. That was like in the 80s. Yeah. Was it? Yep, 1987 to 1990. There are no black people in the Hall of Fame. I'll tell you my number is eight. I told you that. This is Senator Chambers throughout all of the legislative history. This man is famous, y'all. Ernie Chambers? Senator Ernie Chambers. That's him right there. Yeah, that's him? That's him. Here's, here's my problem with Malcolm X, is that he never chose Nebraska. He was born here. He left before I could really say Nebraska had a real profound impact on him. So he is a Nebraska native, but I, I, don't, I never got the sense, and in reading the book, I never got the sense that he considered himself a Nebraska. I'm, I'm actually a little less concerned about the fact that his uh, Nebraska connection is the first 18 months or so of his life. Mm -hmm. I feel like what happened to his family uh, in those 18 uh, months and what drove him out of Omaha was fundamental to how he developed his, uh, his activism. 
uh, just understanding more of who he is uh, to fight through some of the potential um, just the way he was presented and, and fighting through that and honestly probably fighting through some of my own biases. I think I probably learned more about Malcolm X, Malcolm Little than any other uh, person who uh, was presented to us as a nominee. Uh, Malcolm X. Now this was a man that turned his life around. That aspect of him, to me, is a very important lesson. Malcolm X. Very impressive amount of people showed up to say, we'd like to have him. And I heard you. I listened to you carefully. One thing I wanted to mention. <clears throat> the commissioners have not discussed among ourselves any of the candidates. The only vote that I know of is the vote that I have, and that's true of each one of us. I just want you to know that. Malcolm X and Howard Hansen. We agree. Okay? Well, thank you all for being here. I hope you'll come back September 12th. Okay? Yes, just walked in the door, Shamila, <laughs> and she's going to give you a history of not only uh, what we do as an organization, but of Malcolm X and why his family located to Omaha, Nebraska in the first place. Louise was still pregnant with Malcolm. The KKK decided to do a night raid on the Littles' home. They showed up in the middle of the night, threatening violence broke out all the windows. Louise Little, once again pregnant with Malcolm and with three other children home by herself, she stood her ground. She told them that her husband wasn't home and that they needed to leave her alone. She is a very strong woman. I believe none of those commissioners were around the other two times that Malcolm X was nominated. Okay. So they didn't hear the community feedback then mm -hmm. um, directly. Okay. Um, but they probably heard about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, if they did any due diligence, yeah. they would have looked at the past. That's what I'm saying. So I think, I think that's why they at least had to make sure they chose the top three. If they don't choose Malcolm, will I be surprised? Maybe, no. that's, maybe that's something we can talk about. I won't be surprised. I will, I will, I fully, ex I am hoping for the best and expecting the worst. Mm -hmm. I mean, Same. I hate throwing out cliches, but sometimes they're cliche for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at with that. Mm -hmm. I ex fully expect Nebraska, what will surprise me almost is if they do let him in the Hall of Fame. Oh, I'll be totally surprised. That will surprise <laughs> me more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you know, I'd also be surprised if they are surprised. <laughs> as a collective, right? Because only a couple of them, really you could tell, would prefer him not to be. And um, the larger conversation is, why are there no black people, period, in the Hall of Fame? I really do believe that Malcolm X will get it. We'll get it after three tries. I really think mm -hmm. this is a try. Not only because of Third Times the Charm, just because of our country's in a renaissance. I don't want to count my chickens as my grandma said for the eggs hatch, but we know it's time, and they know it's time. They got an opera going here. 
November the 6th, I've been invited to go there. I think it's a shame that we even have to ask for this. This is something that should have been given to us without us having to request it. I think it's going to happen. I think Omaha has to stop hiding behind its supremacy and recognize we are here and we have made large contributions and it's our time. It's his time. I don't know what kind of chance he'll have now, but if anything, they ought to put Malcolm in as an antidote to this guy who started Arbor Day, J. Sterling Morton. He was an avowed racist. He wrote about it. He hated black people. He said they have no rights. They shouldn't be allowed to vote. They shouldn't even be here. And he started Arbor Day. And I didn't research this, but I thought about it because I think things through. Why would a racist be concerned about trees? He wanted to be sure there were enough trees to lynch any black people that came to Nebraska. So in my view, that's why he started Arbor Day. But he's in their Hall of Fame now. Mm -hmm. Put the names of all the commissioners in here to determine the order in which they will vote. And commissioners are pulling a name out. I not only want you to know your vote, but I want to know your rationale for why you feel that person is the right person for this year. And my wife is now a middle school teacher. And when she comes home at night, I don't often hear about the good kids. I hear the bad stories. And I think if there's an opportunity, as a uh, presenter before um, mentioned, that the Hall of Fame is used as an educational tool for teachers. I think there's an opportunity here that uh, we can continue that. And Maybe a tra I'm one of the fourth grade students, typically two of the capital throughout the um, their fourth grade year during Nebraska history year. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe with my vote, maybe there will be a, a uh, uh, Malcolm X will be in the capital. So my selection is Malcolm X. Again, because I think that the story of, of change, um, is transformation, reformation, I think that's an important message to send. One of the things I found was prime consideration is given to contributions in public affairs, the arts, the sciences, the professions. Secondary consideration is given to entertainment, athletics, and the kindred fields where interest, publicity, and general recognition may for a time be intense, but when but where a contribution to society is a secondary thing. So I forced myself to go through all three of these again, read the notes I heard, and, and just did spend a lot of time. I was uncomfortable getting any rest at night. And I finally have to say that what I did was go through all those things, and it helped me come to a conclusion. Excuse me, but I want to get a hold of my notes here. I have, I, I want to vote for Emma Louise Town. Over the last uh, few months, I've been talking to friends and other folks about uh, the nominees and asking for their feedback, uh, especially as, I'm down, as we get down to the finalists. And, uh, even over here in Ireland, I've been asking folks, uh, you know, what they know or what they feel. And, uh, you know, it came down to some very close uh, decisions, but it's been overwhelming support for Malcolm X. Um, and, you know, I, I have to say that I agree with the, that vote, and that's going to be my vote. Uh, he's an incredible human being uh, and uh, managed to do some incredible things and uh, you know, transport himself at a number of, number of different times and he had an insatiable quest for knowledge, which, you know, I can also attribute to the other uh, two finalists, but, uh, you know, I've got to go with my gut and with uh, what I've heard from people who were actually may have been shocked that Malcolm was not already in the Hall of Fame, so Malcolm is my vote.
My one criteria that I've come down to again and again is I firmly believe that it's vital that this honor should be awarded to a person who considered themselves a Nebraska. Therefore, I vote for Emma Louise Town, who fervently throughout her life worked to improve the lives and expand the opportunities for all Nebraskans and the young. Thank you, sir. The few points that I weighed heavily on were as follows. Uh, and I will vote for Emma Louise Pound. One, she was born in Nebraska in 1872. She died in 1958. She spent literally her entire life in Nebraska. Uh, she was on the University of Nebraska's faculty for 48 years. The only woman to ever earn a letter in a men's sport, which was tennis. She was maybe the most amazing thing to me, which would mean almost nothing to a lot of you, was she was president of the MLA the Modern Language Association. And if you've ever written a degree paper or any paper, you probably know about the MLA style sheet. <laughs> this is a difficult choice. Um, I think uh, Emma Louise Pound is, was an amazing woman, like almost supernaturally amazing, uh, in all of the things that she, all of the academic pursuits that she undertook, um, the challenges she overcame. Uh, yeah, but um, my uh, my my heart and my brain has been pulled to Malcolm X because um, I I think that there is a a temptation to choose uh, since this is such a celebratory sort of uh, designation. There's a, a temptation to uh, want not only the, the nominee to be a notable Nebraskan, but also for Nebraska to come out as as um, kind of an unblemished character in the, in the tale. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, Nebraska doesn't shine necessarily in Malcolm X's story. But that fact is uh, a part of what set him, it's only a small part of his path, but it, it set him on a path to do amazing things. We Americans, we take so much for granted, and every now and then, we have to be reminded of the high and the very sacred premises upon which our country has been founded. Because we are a people who believe in the rule of law. We are a people who believe in the allegiance to the flag, liberty, and justice for all. We believe in the Bill of Rights that all men are created equal. We have to be reminded of these because people have to fight for these rights all their lives. Now that's one reason why my vote goes for Malcolm X. <laughs> Nebraska doesn't, doesn't honor him. Nobody will. That's We've right. done to honor him. Allow me to make my Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion that we make this selection to the Hall of Fame a unanimous selection of Thank you. I know that the whole commission thanks you for being here. And we made some history today. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I just finished. Man, it was a surprise. I, I, I came here with the open mind, but hearing the count and seeing what became unanimous was was definitely a uh, a surprise. I, I'm glad that now um, things have been rectified, but it's still a little bit to take in because it wasn't it wasn't expected. But it's good. It was a good 
unexpected event. I'm so excited. I mean, that just it touched my heart so much. I'm so happy for Brother Malcolm El Haas, Malik El Shabazz, and the elders that from the Malcolm X Foundation are no longer with us. Brother Marshall Taylor, Nick, them brothers. You know, like I said, what I originally was doing is I was doing it with them, and that was years ago, like a decade ago. And every time it comes up, let's do it, let's do it. But they're not here, and it happened. And I'm, man, rest in peace, brothers. Rest in power, brother. You know, Malcolm. All y'all rest in power today. You know. And it happened. I'm really excited that this came out well. Um, even if it hadn't, though, as I said, you know, Malcolm X has earned his reputation, he's earned his fame, and it's not something that Nebraska can even give to him or take away. This is an opportunity for Nebraska to practice some restorative justice on behalf of Malcolm X and what happened to his family in 1925. You know, the unanimous vote change was for me what I was waiting to hear. Because it should be a, a unanimous understanding of the importance of this moment. You know, and like Ron said, it, it should have happened a while ago. I believe he said that. Yeah, he voted for him 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and even for Tim to be in Ireland, I can guess who people knew or didn't know that were recommended as nominees to be uh, voted in all the way in Ireland. Here is a man who deserves to be in this Hall of Fame. And there's no way to call it a Hall of Fame than the most famous person who ever lived in Nebraska, I don't care how short a time, is ignored. Malcolm was worldwide. The only thing some people know about Nebraska existing or city of Omaha is, isn't that where Malcolm X was born? And this is all over the world. So I'm going to say all grudges, all the old stuff has passed away, and behold, all things are new. That's a difficult word. Malcolm would have been 97 years old today if he had not been assassinated shortly after his trip to Mecca. February 21st, 1965. He may be gone, but of course we're still here to carry on his legacy. We literally plan to revitalize this community. Uh, we have a lot of very negative statistics that kind of drive the um, energy of our community that we want to change through the legacy of Malcolm X. We believe that our problem is one not a violation of civil rights, but a violation of human rights. Not only are we denied the right to be a citizen in the United States, we're denied the right to be a human being.